there's good reason to want to have that foot traffic. I mean, there's there's good there's good value in having that foot traffic. So every it would benefit everyone to have that there for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Well, I appreciate you guys explaining that. Um, let's see. So, kind of while we're on the topic of expansions, you had mentioned talking about uh, Little Blue Trace Trail and that and the connection of that to uh, Rock Island and Longview Lake. I think that gets involved with like the Paragon Star Project there a little bit. Um, would you guys want to talk about that some as well, since we're kind of talking about trail expansions right now? Yeah, absolutely. Matt, do you want to touch on the uh, Little Blue Trace Rock Island connector? And then I can speak to some of the other connector projects that are kind of in the planning stage. Absolutely. I'd be happy to. So um, the uh, Little Blue Trace and Rock Island connector is another upcoming project that we have. Um, we're probably about you know, a year away from that project getting started. Um, there is some of the Little Blue Trace Trail built near 350 and Nolan Road, sort of on the uh, northeast corner near um, uh, Little Blue Trace Park, I believe is what that park is called. There are uh, baseball fields in that location um, and there's an existing trail there. Mm -hmm. um, the trail uh, goes under 350 Highway, headed south, and um, there's a small trailhead by George Road. Um, this is a, a road that is currently closed to car traffic and is between 350 and Noland. Okay. Um, the Little Blue Trace Trail would then follow George Road over to Noland Road. Okay. Go underneath Noland following the Little Blue River and connect with the Rock Island just south of Brickyard Road. Okay. Which is the old place where it stopped before before it was connected in the new segment that you guys did just last year ago or last year. Correct. Okay. Correct. Yep, that's right. And so that's about a mile, another mile, mile and a half. I, I don't know the exact distance off the top of my head of that one, but I know that it's a, approximately one mile. Um, and that will connect the Rock Island to the Little Blue Trace headed north, northeast. Okay. Now, if we continue going north, northeast, there is a gap in the Little Blue Trace from that park to Lee Summit Road. Mm -hmm. um, Brian, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that's a three mile gap. Is that mm -hmm. correct? You're right, Matt. It's about three and a half miles between Kansas City's Little Blue Valley Park on Nolan Road, uh, kind of to the north and to the east, up to the Phelps Road Trailhead on the Little Blue Trace that's just off of Lee Summit Road. Uh, the county does have some uh, additional right-of-way in there to acquire, so that will be part of the project, Tim, for us over the next few years to identify funding and acquire the right-of-way, do the engineering that's necessary to be able to complete that three and a half mile gap. Here, I'm sure that, that that Tony's heard about it as well. That that gap in the trail is probably the number one after the Rock Island connector, the number one project that we get asked about in the Parks Department because <laughs> so many people use and love the Little Blue Trace. You know, 15 and a half miles. It is still the longest trail inside Jackson County at 15 and a half. It's just an awesome trail, so fun to walk and to ride. But people know that there's other pieces of it further south, and so they right. say and they ask. How can we connect? When are we going to connect? So we, we know that that's a high priority project for us coming up. Cool. I can tell you that, uh, Tim, have you ever ridden uh, Reinhardt Road? Man, where's that at? I don't know. If I have uh, a make sure your life make sure your life insurance is in order and you got your helmet on because, <laughs> I mean, it is it's awful. I mean, it is truly awful. If you go, um, if if you're if you're on Woods Chapel slash Gregory. And you're on the north side of uh, University Health, formerly known as Truman, uh -huh. uh, there right off of Douglas or Lee Summit Road. Right. And you okay. proceed back west um, into the city limits of Kansas City then. Mm -hmm. And instead of bending north, you just go straight. And then the Reinhardt Road is what takes you down the hill. I mean, it's, it's like a grade like this. And then you go over the... <laughs> Then you go with the railroad tracks and you go oh, up yeah. and um, yeah, it'll, it'll test your metal. And um, 
and it is that so for example if you're coming from over by the the that there's a neighborhood um where um that's just straddles the kansas city lee summit line there if you're coming from that neighborhood let's say you live over there and you're trying to get to um the the rock island from the little blue side um you're you know you've got to figure out at this point how are you going to do it and right. so uh going down reinhardt road is is it's something and it pops you out kind of over by uh, the trailhead to what matt was talking about which was the abandoned road thing mm -hmm. that uh, we would implement as part of the connector now that said you go by um, some baseball fields and things, and there's a nice, um, I don't know what you call that that thing, but it takes, you don't have to cross 350, thank God. Okay. You you get to go under 350 safely. Um, mm -hmm. And so that's, it's, it's nice. But anyway, the other option, you know, is if you're trying to get back from the city or you're trying to get back from um, the Rock Island, are you going to go down Ricky Road and try to cross South Nolan Road? That's not a great choice. No. Um, yeah. There's another street, maybe it's roughly 75th Street, mm -hmm. um, that is one of these types of things, too, that you've got to get slowed down and stop before you hit Nolan Road or you're done. Yeah. So I, I think um, if we can figure that out, that will definitely be something good for people's safety and probably comfort level in, in terms of using those trails. Yeah, because, I mean, Nolan Road, just anecdotally, I'd say Nolan Road is probably one of the most heavily trafficked two-lane roads um, in the Kansas City area. I mean, the amount of traffic that goes back and forth down that road is just, it's constant. <laughs> it's just, it's just right. lines of cars right. never end. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, no bike lanes, no shoulders. So all the more reason why these important trail connections need to be made. Yeah. Right. So, so Brian, based upon kind of what you're saying, I'm, I'm inferring a little bit here, but the, especially that, so from Parvis Road right now, where, where uh, the Little Blue Trace Trail terminates to that three mile section, that's like a, probably a five year project, it sounds like. Does that seem pretty realistic? Tim, it is always dependent upon the available funding and right away. Those two things right. are right in front of us. You know, the new uh, grants that are going to be coming available from MoDOT, you know, through the federal highway bill. We're going to be taking a look at those. Uh, we're going to be looking at how can we get some engineering to determine where that right away needs to be that we need to acquire a friendly acquisition from a private landowner in there. So I would love to say within five years, but it truly is dependent, you know, right. upon that funding being available and in the land. We, we love working with the landowners. We want to be good neighbors. And, and I think we've got a really good one to work with in this area. So uh, optimistically, yes, sir, within that time frame. Cool. So you mentioned, Brian, that's a bit of a good segue because one of the things that you want to talk about with trail funding and how trail funding actually happens, would you guys want to spend a little bit of time talking about uh, about that topic, maybe where your funding comes from, how you make your funding decisions, you know, how you